Uh, well, okay, so I am doing um, a bit of a longer video today. This is going to be about heap sort. Uh, so I'm trying to tackle different data structures and algorithms, and this is kind of both. Uh, uh, so what the idea here is, if you want to quickly sort an array min to max or max to min, you can use a heap sort of um, one of those varieties and effectively you just like dump your array into it and then you just pop off the top in order to create to recreate an ordered list i'm going to do two things i'm going to i'm going to code up a data structure called a heap uh, i'm going to make it a min heap um, and then i will use that to sort an array let's work on setting this up so the idea here is we need to the way i'm doing my heap sort is to kind of understand the structure of a, a tree, a binary tree, where each element, like if you think about the root being the zeroth position, the children are going to be like kind of labeled one. But here, let's let's talk. Let's think about it in uh, numbers, like from one on. So I'm I'm not I'm not giving these values. I'm just talking about the position. So if you look at the ordering here, the first row from left to right is one, then the next row is two to three, and then the next row under that is four, five, which belongs to the, to, to the previous number two, and then six, seven belongs to the previous number three. And if you follow this pattern, you'll recognize that each child is effectively like two times the parent. So the one here is like one times two equals the left parent, uh, sorry, left child, and one times two plus one equals the right child. Same rules here, like the three, three times two is six, but if you add one more, you get to the seven. So you, you're able to actually do a little math to properly deduce what is the proper child um, parent relationship uh, in terms of like the ordering. And we can use that for an array. And that's how, that's how I'm effectively gonna be storing this uh, these, da these data points. So the exact same thing, just done um, in a more linear way, a flattened way, basically. So this is basically a this is essentially a flattened binary tree. Uh, and the way heap sort works, um, you kind of need order to it anyway, because whenever you add to the heap sort, you need to add it to the last position, which effectively would be like pushing it to the array. So so this is a really convenient way of storing information for a heap sort. So that's why this that's why I'm using it like this. The only caveat here is that the positions. The math only works when the positions are indexed from one on. So I do need to keep that in mind whenever I'm doing this, um, these, these positions. But okay, so that's the idea. Let me uh, nix that and start coding this thing. So we're gonna code a min heap um, like that. I have a little constructor, which will be establishing the array. And it looks like that. Um, I, I think I'm going to also toss this on github so you can you have access to it in case when, when i am finished you can like play with the code yourself um yeah so what was i thinking yeah so i need to set some a few things here so here are the things that it needs to do i need to insert i need to um uh, peek you should be able to peek the top and then you should be able to remove min remove min and so basically the idea is once we insert everything, we can remove the min over and over again until the thing is empty. So these are the basic. This is the, this is the basic functionality of a min heap. I'm going to be adding some helper methods, but these are the big ones to, to keep in mind. Um, okay, so first thing I'm going to do is do the insert one. Okay, so how do I insert? Well, I'm inserting a value of some kind. Um, insert val. I will. All I have to do here is if you remember you add the value to the end of the um, binary tree in this case it's like pushing it to the end of the array, of the array so it's literally this array dot push push the value here's the thing though what if you push a value that's really small and it actually is the minimum um well in that case you need to kind of trickle up or bubble up that number and that's what we'll have to do here we'll have to after we add it we need to do this dot <laughs> bubble up uh, and I'll give it the index. Uh, I'll, I'll have this, I'll, so this is another function I need to make. So let me do that here, bubble up. And this is gonna be the um, child index. 
and when we do the bubble up I want to give it the index of the last position in the array so that's going to be this dot array dot length um, yeah that should be that okay so child index so what happens when you bubble up um, well here's the thing so once you bubble up all the way to the root you're done so it's sort of like a recur this will be a recursive call so I want to make sure that once I get to the top I don't I don't go any further so if child index equals zero then we're done we don't need to do anything you're you've, you've reached the top basically okay so to bubble up I need to first be able to access the parent so I need to be able to do something like um, const parent index uh, sorry parent uh, value uh, well hold on I need to get the and you actually get the parent index right and we can use that in math I was just talking about so parent index is going to be something like get parent and I'll supply the child index and so I'll be able to um, discover what that is after I define this function so I need to do this this is still the child index and the math works like this this child index will be the raw so the raw array index you know so that's on that's you know on a scale of 0 to n I need to add one to that in order to start to in order to do my math properly so I need to make sure that I keep that in mind when I do my math so uh, the child index will be child index plus one and I need to get the parent by simply dividing by two and I will make sure to um, math dot floor that so in case I'm on the right if the child is on the right then that would be like the um, an odd number uh, and, and when you divide by two it'll be a little remainder so you need to make sure you floor this and I want to return another raw index because I want to ac actually access I want to actually access the parent in the array so I need to do my minus one here to kind of return it back to the zero index uh, and this is what I will return so I return that so that is me getting my parent index uh, and once I get a parent index I kind of want a, a nice helper function of like get value so I can um, just pass the index around. I don't need to actually access the array directly in my code because um, I'm just trying to abstract that functionality. So if I have an index, and this is literally just going to return this dot array with the index. You know, that's that's all it's doing. But it's a nice little. Um, I feel it's. I feel it's like really explicit. I prefer, excuse me, uh, being more explicit. Okay, so we do that. So you got your parent index and you have your parent value. So now we can actually do our comparison and we can say, well, if, and this is a min heap, so if the parent, oh, hold on, I could uh, also do the same thing here for the child, child val. So if the parent value is great, it's sorry, greater than the child, so let me do that. If the child val is less than the parent value, then it needs to be the parent, right? It, it We need to swap. Um, so I'm going to say this dot swap, swap the child index and the parent uh, index. So what is this dot swap? Well, guess what? I got to define it. Swap. This is going to be like just two elements, two indices. So that's literally just like typical swapping here. So this is going to be this dot array um, i, and then I can just like copy this real quick. So it's, it's, uh, it's going to be that equals to the one with the J. And then the J is now equal to that temp value that I had to store. And that's me just quickly swapping the values with at those indices. Um, once I do the sw swap, though, that new parent, this that smaller parent, could potentially be uh, need to be bumped up even more until you get to the parent, to, to, to the root, I mean. Um, so here, I would definitely say... Uh, make the recursive call to bubble up the um, the parent index because it is now so the child and parent has swapped so now the parent index needs to be considered for bubbling up um, so that's what that looks like so that's what the insert does I'm curious let's we can start testing this thing I think right so let's uh, make some tests real quick so test um, const array. Let's make an array of like a bunch of numbers. Some 
that's, that's, that's a big number there. Uh, put zero in there uh, just in case. Um, and then I can make a new heap. Uh, min heap, min heap equals a new min heap. Uh, did I call it lowercase min? I thought it was capital. It's Oh, it is lowercase. Why is that? You should be capital. You're a class for God's sakes. Huh, interesting. So I think I want to actually add another quick method here, which is like insert from array, which gives you an array, and then you just do insert on from like just loop through the, or the array. So this would be like for const num of array this dot insert the num. I think that that should work. Um, so let me just call min heap dot insert from array the array. And I should be able to console.log the uh, min heap dot array directly. I think I'm in my js dot heap sort. Okay, cool. So we have, uh, this doesn't work. Oh, it's not working the way I thought. So this zero should have been brought to the top. So right now it is not bubbling up properly. Um, yes, because this is not the array dot length, it should be minus one. So that is a thing. Okay, look at that. <laughs> you gotta make sure your code works. Um, okay, cool. So that's a great insight. And the zero, like 34 is, is less. Uh, and on the left, so this 56 is actually belonging to the 34, as well as this large number. So that got sorted on the left side. 23 is less than 45 in that one. So that's that looks good. Okay, cool. So that is that bubble up functionality. I can now have my peak function, which is really easy because all I have to do is um, return this dot array with this dot array dot length. And you have the minus one, of course. Ha ha ha. One thing I, I'm noticing though that if I try to index um, a value, if I if it, if it's empty. I should not be. I, I shouldn't be able to peek. I want to be able to. I want to throw a error if I try to peek on an empty heap. So I'm going to, have to find two functions, two methods here. Is empty, which is going to be just literally return this dot array dot length. Okay. Um, and I might have another one, which is called guard empty, which is literally saying you know if this dot is empty. Um, throw a new error. Empty. The heap is empty. Okay, minor thing there, but that's um, something I'm, I'll probably need to consider it later on as well. So before this code, I just want to call this dot guard empty just to make sure I when I get to that line, everything's okay to pass through that to the next line. Um, okay, cool. So that is working. This is working. Now I have to have my remove remove min. Uh, I'm just gonna copy that. Remove min. So this will automatically pop off the um, top, right? So here's another place where I wanted to guard because if it's empty, I don't want to remove anything. So everything that everything after this will be okay because I have length in the array. Um, I'm going to say. Uh, const the output is equal to this dot peak. Um, I want to re return out. So actually, so it's not there's there's like peak. I think I want to do. I want to I want to shift or moving it from the top right. I pop off. I I shift off the or pop off the top, um, and that will be the value, and then. Uh, then I need to what's effectively like bubbling down. So in for min min heap, you want to take the last value and then bring it to the top and then bubble it down in order to find your smallest value. And by putting the large number the large number at the top and then bubbling it down, you're you're ensuring that the tree structure remains uh, steady or, or uh, remains the, the proper length and everything's oriented properly. Here I need to do so. This dot array dot push. You want to put uh, sorry, not push. You have something called unshift, which is basically pushing to the top, uh, to the to the beginning. So you unshift, and then you do this dot array dot pop. 
So you remove the last and you add it to the beginning. And that's what that's doing. So this is um, push uh, place last element at start. And then I need a bubble. So this is going to be this dot bubble down. And I bubble down from zero index. Um, here's the thing though. If I do this shift and I have no more elements, then I can't do all this stuff. So I need to make sure that um, if this dot array dot length, if you don't if you don't have length, then just return the um, oh, return the the um, value and that's it. You're done. Your array is empty, so you don't need to do anything else. Um, so then I call, I unshift, I bubble down, and then once the bubble has ref, uh, finished, I can return out. So now I need to code this bubble down thing. Um, so I'm gonna just like shift this up a little bit. Uh, so all the, all the logic stays the same. Um, so let me just quickly uh, check to make sure this is working. So after I do the min heat insert, I wanna do remove min okay and I'll just like see uh, I'll uh, undo that real quick I, I want to make sure that I can like do the whole popping pushing thing Hort is, is empty wait what remove min is empty after I called insert okay so is empty it needs to be not double it needs to be single I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure people were probably screaming at the screen maybe um this dot shift, you're right, it's not this dot shift, it is this dot array shift. Very good, thank you computer for telling me all my problems. Okay, cool, so here, so hold on, so I need to like kind of like take a snapshot before and after basically. So before then, what do we see? Okay, so before that, we had the zero, we popped the zero, the smallest value off, then we swapped the last position to the first position. And then we will need to bubble that down. Okay, so now we can actually proceed here. Bubble down. So bubble down will take a parent index and it will try and use logic to go down. Okay, so how does this work? So you're gonna need to get the value of the parent and the value of the left and right child because those are gonna be um, potential candidates for swapping in, for swapping. So let's get the value though. Let's get the value first. Um, const parent val equals this dot get val of the parent index. Okay, and I can do the same for the left and right um, child. So I'm just gonna do like this. Is that, is that okay? This is the left. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, and this is right val. Okay. Right val, left val is that. Um, hold on, I don't have the child index. So this left index. Left index uh, is going to be this dot get left child. Uh, parent index is that. Okay, so I'll need to like code that as well. Okay, so this is the left child. Just want to handle things like that right child okay left child right child so now you need to create these functions here um, or I should say methods left child um, so the left child so it's literally just I have to keep in mind oh I need to have the parent index so this is again the raw array index so I need to always add one to this so this is gonna be that plus one and I literally just need to multiply this by two because that will um, give you the child for the left. The one for the right is going to be plus one. Um, so I return that. Uh, and it's going to do the same thing for the right child, but I'm just literally going to add. Oh, actually. <laughs> Think about this. All right, so this is literally just uh, this dot get left child um, parent index, and you just add one to that. So a little little um, conservation there. 
Uh, hold on. Oh, 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 oh. Wait a second. Wait a second. This is not the same. I, I take this back. This is... This is right, but this one isn't right. Because I need to return this to the zero... Uh, or I need to return to the one... Sorry, to the zero index. So I need a minus one here. So it's parent index plus one times two, and then you minus one to return it back to the same state. And then the left child will just be one more than that. Okay, cool. Um... Here's the issue, though. Imagine if your parent is like, it, it doesn't have children, and you're trying to index something that's larger than the array. So you need to make sure that you um, check that. So say is valid child, um, or even is valid node, I would say. Uh, node, is that right? Mm, yeah, that's fine. Um, and I'll check the index. So literally, this is just going to say um, turn is index is index, so index is greater than zero, technically, and index is less than or equal to, is less than uh, this dot array dot length. Okay, those are the ones that are valid. Maybe I should say is valid index. That's a little more, bit better, I think. Okay, cool, so I have my left index, so I need to say if this dot is valid index, left index, then I can do whatever, whatever I need. Otherwise, it's, it's kind of pointless. Um, same thing with right. If it's not valid, then we don't need to worry about it. Cool. All right, cool. Um, so here's the logic then. The parent value we have, so now we can make comparison on the right trial. So we literally just say if the the parent uh, val, parent val is, uh, I should say the left val. I, li I like to put the smallest thing on the left, that's why. Um, if left val is less than the parent, then we know we need to swap. Um, this dot swap left index and parent index, parent index, right? You swap your parent index and now you will need to make sure that um, you, you continue bubbling that down because once you make the swap, you know that that potentially might be the, you might need to get the smallest number out of that. So you need to like bubble this down as well. So this is a recursive call. Yeah, yeah okay of call here bubble down um, and you bubble down on the ch the the child index because that's now that's now where the new the parent is and that's the, the value that is in question so this is the parent uh, the child the left index right here's the thing though if this occurred on the left index you can imagine that whatever you swap into the parent spot might um, be a value that needs to be now considered versus the right. So that value needs to be, um, the parent value has changed effectively. So I need to make sure this is not const, this is let, and that this value is getting changed to that left value, because that is, the, that is now the parent effectively. Um, so if I, if this, if this swap with the left happens at all, then I need to change the left value. I need, I need to change the parent value to that left value. And then I consider the, the right side. Um, this will ensure that the the logic, the, the heap stays in the right um, order. But everything else more or less stays the same here. So I'm kind of just going to kind of copy this and put it up in here. Um, I'm just going to make sure to change that to right value. Uh, I, don't, I don't need to, uh, uh, there's nothing after this, so I don't need to like, I don't care about the parent value swapping in at that point. So I swap the right index. Oh, so this needs to be a right index. Let's write index, and that is how that works. And that's a recursive call on both parent and child um, down the line. And I think that should do it. I don't need to return anything. Um, so let's see. I'm going to save this, see if this works. So when I remove from the, uh, let me see here. When I remove the min, I do my shifting and make sure the min minimum is, sorry, the last value is put up to the top, and I bubble down from the from the root. Um, which is zero. Okay, cool. So let's um, let's check this out. So 
this should, after I do remove min, I should get the next smallest number, which I think is 23. So that should be the one at the top. Yeah, here we go, 23 is at the top. Um, so if I keep doing that, so let me do, um, I think I'm more or less done here, actually. Am I missing anything? I think I have everything. Yeah, it's the fu all the functionality is built out. The bubble down was definitely, this is definitely like the trickiest of the of all of them. But um, you know, I think that it's it's working all right. So here is where I can start doing my loop. I can kind of like loop through it. So I can say um, for I can say while right while min min heap uh, is not empty. I want to console.log min heap dot remove min. And this should be effectively the heap sort. This is going to give me the lowest value over and over again until it runs out of uh, values. So let's see that. Yeah, 0, 23. This is in the order. Yeah, so that worked. And so effectively, this is exactly how you would run your, um, he your min heap. Uh, sorry, your heap sort. It would be a function like heap sort, give an array. Um, I need to bring this down. Okay, so you would uh, so you would instantiate your heap sort. You would uh, insert your values. So that'd be a, a big O of n at that point. So this is big O of n, um, and then I would, I guess I, I I'll create a um, another array here, which is empty, and then I push. Um, so one thing I've learned is the, this is a very minor efficiency, by the way. So if you can, so every time you push to an array, you have the, the if it, the, if you look at what the computer is doing, it's like creating, it's expanding space that it didn't know it needed to expand. And so it's actually taking a, a bit more time than you probably want to deal with. Um, very minor, but it can add up. So if you can, you can actually pre-allocate that space. And if you do that, then the computer doesn't need to like keep changing the size of it. It just like knows how much space. And allocating space is really quick um, for a computer. So um, here, I want to actually make a new array. That is the, the length that I know I need it to be, which is the array dot length here. Um, and that's it. You know, that way it's uh, set up beforehand. So for that, I will just need to create a um, an indices and I'll just make sure to index which again indexing indexing on an array is pretty quick it's basically instant um, it's, uh, or constant time so what I need to do here is say my out dot I equals my min heap dot remove and here I can just say I plus plus so that it will automatically increment the next one and then I could just say return out okay so now here I have the functionality that I was talking about for the heap sort now I can call heap sort array I'm just gonna console log that heap that whatever is returned which is the this out array um, so let's see if that works the way I wanted to. And sure enough, it looks like heap sort works um, pretty quickly. That was a lot of code, but this is a very cool functionality. And if you want it to make this a max heap, which is um, basically the same code, um, the only stuff that really changes is the logic here of what the parent-child relationship is. So if you really wanted to, you could, you could extract this out into another function that's like, um, is correct parent child relationship and you can have like your parent vow and the child vow and you just like return whatever that is so in the in the min heap situation the child sorry the parent should be should be um, smaller than the child so that's the that's the proper relationship right there and then you would just replace that logic here with uh, this dot that. And you literally put your parent val in and then child val in there. 
And I know, look, this is a very long name, but I'm just trying to be really explicit here. Like, this logic will as uh, will be the same um, for the max heap. You just need to change this one thing. So you can actually create a um, a class that is like just the heap class, and uh, have a min heap and max heap that inherits from this class. And then all you have to do is define de properly define this. Um, there's another place I need to put this in though, like right uh, down here. Right here, which is another place, so this needs to also have the same logic here. There and here. Uh, except the child value is now the left value. And this one is the right value. Okay, let me just save this and see if that still works. And sure enough, it does. So this, so this is literally a max heap in disguise. You just change this to the other way. So let's actually try that out. Let's say that the parent needs to be larger than the child. What happens there? Exact opposite. So um, that's uh, that's it for me for now. I will be doing. I think I think I want to do more of these like longer videos about data structures and algorithms. Um, if you find this useful, you know definitely like like it, comment so I know that this stuff is effective and helpful. Uh, and I will see you for the next time.